Today we're going to be doing a brief overview of how to replace an indoor control board and I'm also going to go over just what the basic uh, properties and parts of the system is. Uh, this one here in the clear tube, this is your indoor temperature sensor. The one that's attached to your coil is your coil temperature sensor. The yellow and green wires are your grounds. This here, the small one coming out the bottom, is your louver motor. And then your large one that comes out of the side here is your indoor fan motor. So I'm going to show you how to place your control board or control board assembly, which, on, which one you uh, need. And uh, typically, the only thing you ever have happen to a control board is lightning or power surge or something of the sort, but they're pretty durable. Uh, take off your front cover. And then if you're just replacing the board, the uh, board will slide out. And then once it's out, I'll flip it around so you can see it. And everything just simply plugs in. You have your indoor sensor, your coil temperature sensor, you have your LCD screen. This is your indoor fan motor here. Uh, and then you have your louver motor. And then your main power is hardwired into your relays. So on each one of these, just simply unplug it and move it to your other board. Unplug that one, plug it into your new board. Unplug this one, plug it into your new board. Um, Ram motor, do the same thing. So regardless, all your Molex plugs, you just unplug them, plug them right back in, and the board is changed. Now for some reason, you need to change your assembly. Uh, the only difference between the board and the assembly is the assembly comes with the black box and it also comes with your wires pre-wired into your terminal block um, and it comes with your sensors so that is the assembly so if you have to uh, if you let you replace the assembly or if you need to get to your indoor fan motor for cleaning service wise um, it's also pretty simple only thing you need to remember is whenever you're doing it uh, unplug your coil sensor and then your grounds these are connected by a zip tie. The zip tie is very important. Make sure the zip tie goes back in the exact right spot and your wires are actually angled properly. The wires go in this hole and if you notice the wires the whole time are dipped down and above the drain pan. Reason being is these things sweat and the water can come down on the wires and it will go to the lowest spot and drip. If your wires are hanging over here, your zip tie is not correct or if you don't put the zip tie back on, water can actually overshoot off the drain pan. So, anyway, put your wires back in. And to remove the assembly, you have one screw down here on the bottom. Move my hand out the way so you can see. Down at the bottom here, you take the screw, remove that one Phillips head screw out of the way, and simply lift up on the assembly it will come out of the lock at the top and the whole assembly is removed um, your fan motor is now accessible to service and if it's spring time and you're cleaning the system you might want to remove the assembly out of the way you can wipe down the drain pan you can actually pull up on the coil here clean it all out and if you're in a real dirty environment, you may even need to pull this out, pull your fan motor, and clean your blower wheel. So, anyway, that's all fairly easy to do, very quick to do, and uh, it's just a matter of a couple screws. So you put it back in the top slot, put it back down, put your Phillips head screw back in, and your board is done. 